I'm Shelly. And I'm Charlie. And today is what would have been our... 34th? 32nd. 32nd is what I meant. <laughs> Guys don't know their own... Anniversary. Anniversary. <laughs> Uh, but I don't have to know it because we're not married anymore. <laughs> no, but it's something that we do acknowledge. And we are spending the day together in what I think is a very special way. What are we doing? We are, it's going to sound weird, but we are going to a music repair, uh, instrument repair shop. Um, to have them take a look at some things and answer some questions about my sax. Um, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes me really happy. When he's happy, I'm just elated. And the sax makes him so happy right now. Yeah, it also has made me frustrated because I can't get a, a good sound out of it. But um, there have been some things I found, questions I have about uh, some things on the saxophone and why things, some things work and how some things look on it. And, and um, ask them to tweak it a little bit and uh, ask for their advice. So we're going to the squirrel guys, you say? The squirrel guys, uh, uh, flying squirrel music, or what's it called, right? Yep. Yeah, flying squirrel music. And um, hopefully, uh, I'll get some answers, and they'll uh, reassure me that my sax is fine, and um, we'll let you know how it turns out in another video. Take care. Bye bye. the reed, the harder the high notes are to play. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to talk to you like you don't know anything. You probably do. Okay. I don't want to insult you. Yes. I'm just going to pretend like you don't know anything. And the harder the reed, the higher notes are easier. And you're going to sound less nasal. You sound way better than I was expecting. Okay. First off, <laughs> because I know, I know, I know the story. I haven't played in like 30 years, you know? 40. Okay. There you go. Um, uh, and you, you went all the way down to low C, yeah. which was nice. <laughs> Everything starts here. Yeah. So, you know, and this is a beginner mouthpiece, but you haven't played it forever, so that's yeah. why we recommend it. And it's pretty forgiving, but it's not the greatest sounding. Yeah. So let's see what this does. Um, and these these are actually made in, at Duke University. Really? Yeah, it's dental material. And it's 3D printed, and they're like 200 bucks. They're not cheap, but they're not a million dollars. Yeah. Um, and they're, anyway, let's see if that does anything. Okay, I'll be right back. Do it again. Pieces of clarinet. Stop reading. But uh, this is modeled after a 1960s Pompano Beach Link, which is, you know, the, the, those those mouthpieces are over a thousand dollars, and this is two hundred. But um, and uh, and they're making them too, which is really cool. They're 3D printed. Um, that's cool. Yeah. And again, it's material that's for your mouth. It's dental stuff. It's not like some kind of plastic that's gonna, you know. Make you hallucinate or something, um, but you may hate it. So. Now the, the um, mouthpiece should stay straight, right? right yeah. Uh, although you know, Lester Young played like this. You know, it just depends on the person. Yeah. Okay, so, so one thing, when you're playing low, 
Okay, you want to use two types of air on the back though. For high notes, the air has to move faster, and for low notes, it's got to go slower. Okay, it's the physics of the horn. And so what I tell most of my students is when you want low notes to come out, you, you play like you're cleaning your glasses. You go like this, you go. That gives you really slow, hot air. And for high notes, it's like you're, you're blowing out a bowl of chili. And if you put your hand in front of your mouth, you can change the temperature of your air, which is really weird mm -hmm. when you think about it, right? But that's the deal. It's because it's faster, that it's, it's colder, and it's slower down there. So if you go, and open up your throat and go, oh, that will really help you play those low notes. But maybe not with that mouthpiece. It may not be. Walk down to it. Walk down to it. Actually, if you want to try one, do you want to try a metal link like Stan Guts? You can. I've got one here. Yeah, I'm just one. This is my old mouthpiece. I'm not even selling it, but you, it'll give you a, an idea of what a link feels like. I'll put it on for you again because this is a weird literature also. Here. Let me get my mask. Here's that when I played last, I had a metal mouthpiece. And I play gigs like all the time. So you sound really good. It's hard. Go easy on yourself. Don't beat yourself up. And if you get frustrated, it might be good. Put it down. Come back. Yeah, yeah that's what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't throw it against the wall. Don't hit anything. But you know, I think I think maybe. Do you have any books to read or anything like any any sheet music or anything like that? Yeah, I do have. Actually, have the transcribed Stan Getz. Uh, yeah, but do you have anything like easy? <laughs> you know, there is if you do it really slow. Yeah. Um. I, I mean, you know, like even it's like a beginner band book. Just, just stuff. You know, I mean, what I do, I've got, I've got a shed that I practice in, and I've got a bookshelf, and it's filled from floor to ceiling with music, and it's all trumpet, saxophone, all types of music. And every day I read something I've never read before, and I don't work on stuff that's really difficult specifically. I just work on sounding nice and playing slow. Um, but I, I think what you're dealing with is just the, the pains of coming back to it. I don't think it's anything specifically wrong. And I, I don't think you sound bad. I don't think, like, I was expecting much worse. I hear a lot of bad saxophone players in here. Right? <laughs> I do. So, you know, um, you may want to go try some, some more mouthpieces for fun, you know, if you can. Um, or you might want to just stick to yours. And me, I would recommend getting just some beginner band books or some books of like some class. I've got a few books at home that are just like classical melodies that are easy, you know, like some Debussy and some Brahms and, you know, a, a couple of easy Mozart pieces. And just play, not just, I mean, playing Stan Getz is great, but to get to be, to play like Stan Getz, you have to work on easier stuff mm -hmm. to get there, I think. You have to crawl before you walk. Yeah. So I think that's what you're dealing with. So, okay, cool. I don't know if any of that helps yeah. at all. Uh, but, I think you feel good knowing the size is good. Oh God, that's much nicer than my horn. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have? I, I have a Yamaha 62 and a Con, so, and it's fine. I just can't afford a Mark VI, you know? <laughs> that is. Yeah, oh God, crazy. that horn is, yeah. But it was, uh, Mark VI was uh, Stan Getz's favorite. Yeah. Well, Six. it was everybody's. <laughs> Coltrane played a Stan, uh, Mark VI, Sonny Stitt played a Mark VI, uh, Sonny Rollins played a Mark VI, Archie Shutt played a Mark VI. Um, every single person, that after the Mark VI came out, basically played a Mark VI. Wow. It was the gold standard, and every horn made today is a copy of a Mark VI, with various, but every, it changed everything. Mm -hmm. But this horn is like a Ferrari 
compared to like most horns are like you know model t i mean it really is so that this is that's that's why they're so sought after it since so, so they changed everything everything is copying this this is this is what everybody wants plus everybody plays it if you listen to any coltrane album this is right here if you listen to girl from eva you're hearing a mark so that frustrates me even more no no i'm gonna use a mark more and i can't sound like it listen <laughs> okay let me tell you this Practice. i've been playing for over 30 years i can't <laughs> do it don't don't you know come on that's a really good bullshit. there's a reason those guys are who they are you know um, so anyway, yeah. Well, thank you so much for this session. Uh, yeah, 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 no problem. I, I just, you know, appreciate I, it. I hope that helps in any way. I hope you have your mouthpiece still. You can use that. <laughs> Hello, I'm Shelly. And yeah, I'm Charlie. And we're back. We're back from where? We're back from the Flying Squirrel Music Store where they do instrument repair. And um, <clears throat> I'm very happy with the results because... Um, gentleman there named uh, Peter Lamb, um, who works there and owns it, uh, actually. Uh, he uh, fixed my saxophone. That was a couple of little things. And he uh, assured me that it works fine. But then he took it a step further. And he basically gave me uh, a mini uh, lesson. He listened to me play. And he made suggestions and comments on what I was doing, what I could do, what I should be doing. And uh, how I could get better. And, um, but what was really special? Like that we didn't even know. Well, what was special is we found out that he actually has a band. And he plays the sax. And they, uh, they have made albums. And they uh, appear in person all over the place. And um, he's a little bit of a minor celebrity, you might say. What's, so, his, what's his band's name? Peter Lamb and the Wolves. Yeah. And um, you'll see a reference to them in the in the notes for this video. And um, it made me happy because he said I sound pretty good. And he's kind of uh, was um, uh, amazed that I that I'm where I'm at, given my not playing for, you know, over 40 years of uh, closer to. Yeah, it's actually closer to almost 50 years. And um, he loves my saxophone. He says it's in great shape. He played it briefly and. Um, so that was really exciting. And he even had you play on his Stan Getz kind of mouthpiece. Yeah, he, yeah, I played on a mouthpiece. Um, a couple of different mouthpieces I tried. And um, I wasn't happy with them, but he said I need to, you know, go mouthpiece shopping because it all starts with the mouthpiece. And there's a store that he told us about that has mouthpieces that lets you try them. Um, and to find out which one you like best, which is awesome because otherwise you're just buying and you don't know if it's going to be any good for you, right? So, so was it a good day? It was a great day. And then we went out to eat and um, and we came back and we're going to listen to some jazz, some classical music and just hang out. So um, it was a great day. Uh, trying not to think about what's going on. That's You got to get out of yourself. You got to get out of the... Um, you know, they're just kind of laying around thinking about what's happening and feeling sorry for yourself. You got to get out there and, um, and, and do stuff. Life. Yeah. And, celebrate um, life. Enjoy. And um, I find that I'm able to joke around more and um, lately and I'm happier. You have been. And um, it's all good. So that's the story. Um, and uh, check out uh, Peter's website. Okay. Awesome. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.